Thank you, Clement. Um, thank you to the Lyft organizers for, for inviting us. Um, out of curiosity, uh, blockchain and Bitcoin, um, show of hands, uh, how many of you have heard about it or, or have some passing understanding of it? It's pretty good. And Ethereum, has anybody heard of Ethereum? It's great, okay, thank you. Um, so what is blockchain and what is Ethereum? Um, for the last decade or two, or for the decade or two before Bitcoin, um, people were trying to build different digital money systems. And many succeeded, uh, but there was one central flaw uh, in that resulted from something called the double spending problem. Uh, so essentially there was no way to ensure that people didn't double spend their, their digital tokens. Um, louder? Sorry. So there was no way to, there was no way to uh, ensure that people didn't double spend their digital tokens um, without having a centralized database to make sure that that, uh, um, that wasn't done. Uh, so in uh, November 2008, uh, a person or a group named Satoshi Nakamoto uh, wrote a white paper uh, called Bitcoin, uh, which basically solved the double spend problem. So in a decentralized way, um, the algorithm pre presented uh, enabled uh, digital money um, to be created. On January 3rd, 2009, it was released. Um, so Bitcoin built on some technologies and implemented essentially the first use case of those technologies, which is transmission and storage of value or a money system. Um, uh, an inventor named Vitalik Buterin uh, was working on the Bitcoin project, working on many other projects, uh, Bitcoin 2.0 projects, to try to bring more functionality to that sort of system uh, beyond just money. Um, so he worked on many different projects in the space and realized that uh, a lot of smart people weren't making much progress. And so he took a step back and um, wrote a white paper um, called uh, basically Ethereum. Uh, and uh, uh, a bunch of people uh, gathered around that white paper um, and essentially formed the Ethereum project. So in, uh, in late January 2014, uh, we all met, formed the project, and it was announced. Vitalik uh, uh, did a presentation. Um, so s about six, seven months ago, July 30th, 2015, um, this group actually released the first version of Ethereum. Um, so, um, it is a fully fledged operating or operating version of Ethereum, uh, and people are building on it now. Um, the interesting thing about it was that uh, it, it embodies a, a principle of decentralized organization, uh, essentially uh, in opposition to top-down command and control, and the way it came to life was basically in the same way. It's self-organized. So the Ethereum Foundation put out the code, people downloaded it. Um, in, the, in order to fund the project, we conducted a sale. Um, we sold the token Ether for Bitcoin, and all of the receipts, 9,000 different receipts, were actually stored in a decentralized way on the Bitcoin blockchain. Um, so in order to construct the Genesis block, the beginning of the Ethereum project, uh, the Ethereum developers created a mechanism whereby everybody who wanted to could download the Ethereum client, um, build the Genesis block themselves, and then start these things running, and they would reach out into cyberspace and connect with one another, and essentially uh, it formed itself. Uh, six months later, um, success. Uh, there are thousands of developers around the world. Um, people are being asked to speak at conferences like Lyft. Um, and uh, the token itself is actually doing quite well. It, it has become um, basically number two behind Bitcoin in terms of total transactions um, and the size of the monetary base. Um, so Ethereum has essentially built the world's first world computer. Um, it's, it, Capabilities uh, arise from the same five components um, that enable Bitcoin. Um, these things are a blockchain database, so that's 
essentially a database of blocks of transactions um, that lead all the way back to the start of time, um, uh, basically six months ago. Uh, and this database is a shared resource. It's a, a next generation kind of database. Um, it, uh, it, it presents or it contains transactions that are time stamped, um, contains transactions or data and programs that are shared, um, and it's a non repudiable and transparent database. Um, the second element is the cryptographic token. Um, these are based on, on public key cryptography, so essentially private keys and public keys. They're very similar between Bitcoin and um, Ether or Ethereum. Um, both systems have a peer-to-peer -peer network architecture. So this turns the paradigm of client-server computing to one of um, in one in which every node on the network is both a client and a server. So it decentralizes um, processing and makes it so that there isn't a single point of vulnerability or control. Um, both systems have a consensus formation algorithm, so that essentially involves uh, processors around the world processing transactions and all agreeing on exactly what happened and when. In Bitcoin, it's what happened and when with respect to transmission and storage of value. In Ethereum, it's what happened and when with respect to uh, the execution of shared programs and can also do what Bitcoin does, transmission of storage and value. Um, the essential differentiating element uh, between Bitcoin and Ethereum is what you can do on it. And that's enabled by the virtual machine and the programming language. In Bitcoin, there's a very simple virtual machine at each node um, and a very simple programming language. You can only write a very limited class of programs. Uh, on Ethereum, uh, there is a general purpose computer or virtual machine at each node and a very rich programming language. So you can write whatever you can dream up, essentially. Um, it, it is possible to build decentralized applications uh, on top of and outside of the Bitcoin protocol. Uh, essentially, when you do that, you're sharing the data, but there is no real way to share the program. So you can't really know um, that a specific program or process is operating to affect that data. Uh, those things would have to be uh, on a centralized server somewhere. Um, so Ethereum's core value uh, with respect to Bitcoin um, is that unlike Bitcoin that requires specialist programmers um, to stack up cryptographic primitives outside of the protocol to try to keep things secure, um, if they're trying to do something semi-sophisticated, um, for Ethereum, average programmers can build sophisticated decentralized applications uh, taking advantage of the full security of the protocol. So uh, to a software developer, an average software developer, the dev process looks very similar to building a web application or a, or a mobile app. Um, so these five components together um, are a global computational resource because these networks are, um, by definition, uh, globally accessible. Um, the upgraded uh, components uh, enable Ethereum um, to enable uh, configurably transparent, non-repudiable, and uncensorable, trust-minimized, uh, pseudonymous usage of shared programs on this shared infrastructure. Um, so to this decentralized computational substrate, uh, if you add decentralized storage in the form of things like uh, IPFS, the um, interplanetary file system, um, and different kinds of bandwidth, whether it's centralized bandwidth or decentralized mesh bandwidth, uh, you get the world computer, or, or what we like to call the Ethereum world computer, which is transparent, deeply secure, it's uncensorable, it's unstoppable, um, it's non-repudiable, um, and elements on it are natively interoperable. So programs um, can access data uh, from other programs very, very easily, provided they have permission, of course. So the Ethereum world computer represents a strong cryptographic foundation for building systems, building world systems. Um, essentially, 
Um, these systems are based on the principle that code is law rather than having to uh, rely on legal business, um, jur jurisprudence, uh, and other types of systems um, is that essentially operate in a top-down command and control type of context. Those sorts of systems lead to siloing in of information um, and over-concentration of power. So the, assess the essence of Bitcoin, um, or the essence of blockchain, Bitcoin and Ethereum, is that uh, different actors with different concerns uh, can interoperate with one another um, in business processes embodied in smart contracts on that blockchain um, in a way that they can fully trust. Um, this is revolutionary. Um, because everybody maintains their own uh, local copy of the database and the programs, um, there is no opportunity for one person, a rogue system administrator, a, a CFO, to get in there and manipulate the numbers from six months ago. So challenges and roadmap for Ethereum, uh, adoption, 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 adoption. Um, we've thought about many different aspects of it, but it seems to be happening. Um, there's a lot of press. There are thousands of developers around the world that are building software for Ethereum and releasing software for Ethereum. These are small independent projects. These are, these are big uh, corporations. Um, and um, it's happening. Uh, there are also hundreds of companies that are um, talking to organizations like ours to help them understand their blockchain strategy and, and build software for them. So scalability is, a, is the major challenge for blockchains. Uh, at Ethereum, uh, there is a scalability solution that's been worked on for over a year. It involves proof of stake, uh, moving from the consensus formation algorithm called proof of work to one called proof of stake, and it involves sharding of the address base. So uh, without getting too technical, these things, uh, there are proof of concepts that have been written uh, to, uh, to get this done. Uh, so what is Consensus? Consensus is a company I started about 16 months ago. There are currently 70 people working there uh, on four continents. We build decentralized applications. Uh, we maintain a bunch of core infra infrastructure, uh, so that's the Ethereum client and developer tools, and we have a professional services arm called Consensus Enterprise that does consulting work. Um, what is a decentralized application? It's essentially a set of smart contracts on a blockchain and user interfaces for accessing those things. And the way that the user interface um, interacts or enables the user to interact with those things is by um, presenting the user with uh, text fields, numbers, etc., choices, uh, a go button or an execute button. And then that user interface packages up a transaction, asks the user to sign it, and it gets injected into the blockchain network. Um, and it finds the contract or the, the smart contract that, that it's supposed to execute and, and <laughs> execution happens. Um, so at Consensus, we're building a bunch of decentralized applications. We think of a bunch of these things as core components. Um, they are uh, wallet identity, reputation systems, registry systems, token issuance and management systems, decentralized exchange, um, a glue system for linking uh, different blockchains together. Um, uh, we built a decentralized application store. We built an Ether browser, which enables you to access dApps from within a regular browser. Um, essentially, we think of these things as a economic, social, and political operating system, components that can be used by other applications or platforms of software um, a, as the, the core building blocks. Um, so on top of this core, we built a triple entry general ledger system. We built a smart document formation and management system. We were building a decentralized Reddit or a threaded discussion system. We built Boardroom, which is a governance tool, and Wayfund, which is a crowdfunding platform. Um, handful of other things are being built. Um, we're also building open industry platforms. So these things um, essentially 
we define some roles and then we invite lots of people and businesses to fill those roles and, and interoperate on the system. And identity systems and reputation systems make, uh, make all of that uh, feasible. Uh, some of these that we built are a prediction markets platform, an, an event and community management platform, a loan platform. We built uh, Ujo Music, which is, uh, enables artists to register content, attach usage policies to that content, um, and then consumers or other artists can um, pay for those licenses and payment is achieved in real time. Um, we're about to have our first provably fair decentralized hand of Ether Poker. Um, two platforms, uh, which I'll talk about more in a minute, are uh, called resource generation platforms. One's an open energy markets platform, one's a community supported agriculture platform. Uh, so, so some implications for all of this. Uh, future of business process architectures. To us, the world looks like companies with private blockchains on which they put their business processes, um, Defining a company would then define use cases and partners in other companies and create a partner blockchain or a consortium blockchain and then some of their use cases or business processes would be appropriate for the public Ethereum network. Um, future of identity. Uh, identity is really messed up. Many people don't have it. Uh, many people spoof it. Um, Essentially, we are building something called Uport, which will enable self-sovereign identity. It'll enable you to control your own personal data. Uh, you can release it in any sort of situation that you want to release it. It'll be configurably private. Uh, Uport also allows you to hold tokens of value. Um, so it's, uh, it's basically a, an endpoint for a lot of different things that you'll be able to do on this new decentralized web that we're creating. Uh, next generation financial industry infrastructure. We built a, a smart document formation management system. We built smart contracts that embody business processes uh, that can be represented as essentially state transition graphs where the different counterparties sign off on, on different state transitions uh, to model the flow of a business process. Um, and we built Balance, which is a triple entry accounting or general ledger system. So this uh, will enable uh, a financial inf industry infrastructure uh, which can have real-time comprehensive auditing, real-time risk metrics, sensitivity analyses. Um, we uh, will enable the tracking of provenance of different elements um, in the system, so commodities, uh, pharma, food, etc. Uh, we're building dashboards that will enable regulators, that will enable companies to track all of their activities on the blockchain and also regulators to have a view of that. So, and regulators will, will be able to slice up um, the different views and have a real-time sense of the flows in a regional sector or global economy. Um, Implications for secure IT infrastructures. Current in infrastructures essentially have uh, valuable components in the center protected by firewalls. This is a bad architecture um, and it is regularly uh, penetrated. Theft thefts are common, destruction is common. Um, this sort of infrastructure puts um, business processes on a blockchain, access is in the identity portal, um, every single transaction in that sort of infrastructure is a cryptographically secure transaction in which the user is authenticated and um, the user is, uh, is authorized granularly for each business process. Uh, future of moneyless commerce, uh, if you tokenize assets and resources, uh, you enable barter systems that are lightweight, you don't need to carry around the things that you're trading. Um, and if you have ubiquitous exchange rates, um, uh, everybody can um, pay with the tokens that they want to pay with and everybody can receive the tokens that they want to receive. Uh, so uh, I can have 100 tokens that I prioritize to pay with, you can have 200 tokens that you would accept and our agents figure out exactly how to do that transaction. Uh, you may need a, a third party in there sometimes to do an exchange uh, in an intermediary token. Um, so resource generation platforms and moneyless 
commerce. We built an open energy markets platform. We built a community supported agriculture platform. Um, both of those have generators. Um, photovoltaic arrays are the generators in the decentralized energy platform. Uh, and farms are the generators in the agriculture platform. The resources are tokenized kilowatt hours and tokenized apples or potatoes. Um, and essentially, those systems can be used in a spot market where people buy the tokens and trade them for kilowatt hours or other products, um, or, they, or futures and options can be issued so that uh, consumers can provision for their resources over a certain period of time. So, um, these platforms, um, these blockchains will constitute a mesh of what we believe will be smaller interacting business concerns um, and we look forward to a day in which, uh, in which uh, Mary can send some kilowatt hours across the, or send some electrons across the street to Bob, get paid for it in Apple tokens um, and uh, yeah, that's it. Thank, thank you. Thank you, uh, Joseph, for this uh, very uh, educative presentation. Uh, so what we'll be doing, I didn't mention it, is we will just have a few questions, just to go maybe uh, deeper in some of the uh, topics that you wanted. So you have a link that you can find on the Twitter, uh, and you can ask the question, and we'll receive it and uh, choose the question by themselves. So one first thing that I found very interesting when we met with you uh, almost one year ago now, and what the Ethereum community has been trying to build is, from the public standpoint, it's very technical. It's like almost a gibberish or like crypto something. Yes. Uh, but what you are trying to do is to bring it not to the technical people, but to um, open and more traditional industries. So can you just talk about a little bit more about how can your work be used by anyone in the room in a very simple way? Um, it, it's a complicated question. <laughs> uh, we are building different applications that are consumer focused. So yeah. poker, prediction markets, uh, we're building a special kind of prediction markets that focuses on the entertainment industry. We think that will be an interesting access point. Um, crowdfunding platforms, lending platforms. Uh, there, there will be lots of ways for individuals to get involved. We're also, our, our anticipation is that adoption won't be really fast, um, but we are seeing a lot of businesses interested in understanding blockchain, uh, figuring out how to make certain processes more efficient, or even set up new business models. So I, I think there will be a lot of that activity over the next few years. And so my last, my last question, can, yeah. My last question about the business model is how does consensus is working from a business standpoint? Because the model you are trying to apply is quite interesting, no? I, we think it's interesting, yes. So, so consensus is a, a group of developers and other personnel. Um, everybody, we're, we're still working through the details of this process, but, but essentially everybody owns a piece of consensus and there are many um, quasi-independent projects that are actually quite interdependent because everybody needs the identity project, everybody needs the reputation project, um, and each one of these projects is potentially uh, capable of spinning themselves out into an independent company. Um, the core people of each project own direct equity yep. in their own project, and everybody owns equity in the hub, which also owns a lot of equity in all those projects. So everybody owns a piece of everything that they're working with. Uh, it fosters communication, collaboration. Um, it gives entrepreneurs diversification of their portfolio, and uh, we think it will keep us together for a long time. Cool. Yeah. Thanks so much again for coming and uh, bringing you, you uh, us all these kind of uh, interesting topics. Thanks.